So John and I are here to talk about um, our enterprise functionality roadmap and uh, what's coming in uh, logic apps in regards to our enterprise capabilities. Uh, today we'll talk about <coughs> the integration account. Uh, we, we saw some intros to it uh, in the uh, keynote. And we'll, that's our, our container for artifacts where we'll put uh, the, the different artifacts you need for doing much of your B2B and XML processing. Uh, enterprise messaging, well, we'll actually go into B2B and the functionality to enable EDI for X12, Edifact, AS2. Uh, some of those enterprise features around uh, message handling. Um, how we can do Visual Studio development and the tools that you're used to and in, in being able to enable those scenarios. And then finally, enterprise connectivity and how we're going to do uh, hybrid connectivity to the systems you care about on-prem. So first, let's talk about the integration account. So this integration account is a flexible container for the artifacts, your enterprise artifacts. So that includes your XML schemas, your maps, your XSLTs, uh, trading partners, agreements, and the certificates that's needed for doing uh, B2B interactions across EDI with AS2. That container for artifacts, that's, that's acting as our vertical. So one of the things that we wanted to do with the, with the integration account is uh, the first support EDI coming out of the box. So then you can see how we built one of the verticals on top of Logic Apps. And then make it extensible. So you can actually take that, uh, that uh, integration account, add your own metadata to partners and agreements, so you can have your own training partner context uh, for yourself, or start using that, you know, not necessarily an EDI, but you can use, you have your own notion of a trading partner agreement used in another type of vertical that you want, and be able to extend the platform in that way. Uh, it's easy to manage. Uh, the integri enterprise integration pack is an Azure resource, so it goes through the Azure Resource Manager, so you get all the benefits for using uh, that as a resource. So that means you get a REST API, the managed REST API with, with OAuth. It has, uh, you can tag all of your elements that you have that you put into your account. You can um, have uh, auditing of all those requests, so you can see who's adding and removing items from that from that store, and that's really important in a lot of your B2B scenarios. We want to make sure if anybody's modified your trading partners or agreements, make sure that still works. Um, of course, you want to have a REST API, so you, know, you don't want to be tapping at some portal trading partners and, and agreements, when, especially when you have hundreds or thousands of those, or you want to be able to automate uh, creating new partners and agreements in your system. Uh, and of course, we have PowerShell to enable that as well. <coughs> So because we're, we're behind ARM as a, as a resource, then you get the secure, scalable, and manageable experience that you'd expect out of any uh, Azure resource uh, that's in there. Uh, let's see. So let's what actually go. Do they actually have schemas, or is it just flavorable? Sorry, what's your question? Containers, do they actually have those artifacts, or are they just containers? Let's go look. His question was, do they actually have schemas or are they just containers? So what I have here, let me show you, is uh, this customizing mode, is an integration account. And in that integration account, this integration account is the Azure resource. And you'll notice that we have schemas, maps, partners, and certificates. The one thing that's missing here, this is work that's in development. Uh, is agreements, and that'll be coming soon to be added to this uh, list of artifacts that's in the system. So if you go ahead and look at schemas, schemas are what we have today is XML schemas, so you can upload those XML schemas, and you can actually look at these schemas um, here, and you can actually look at the, the content of that schema. So these are our XML schemas. So they're schemas, so you can go ahead, add, you can, you can up, uh, upload new ones on top of it, uh, upgrade the, the schemas that you have, download them down to your system to go and reference them. That's, that's done a lot. My question is, like, when you subscribe for this enterprise integration pack, I assume that you get all the EDA related schemas. That's what oh, I see. Oh, I see your yeah. question. So your question is, do you get all of the EDI schemas, the Edifact schemas, that when you, when you ask for, for being on the early adopter program for, for the EIP? Uh, I'll leave that question to John. 
Yeah, so the, the intention is to provide the schemas necessary to support the functionality, so Expel and uh, Edipac later. Uh, we'll talk a bit about more of that later. But, uh, we have a section yes. on EDI. We'll talk yes. about that. So here we have our maps. Our maps are XSLTs. So these are the XSLTs that uh, you're familiar with, the same ones that get uh, built out of BizTalk server. So the BizTalk server mapper produces a DLL as well as an XSLT. And these are the ones that, that uh, get pushed up here. Uh, one of the things that we're doing is, am I going to Visual Studio? Yeah. So one of the things that we're doing is we're having a uh, in Visual Studio, we've um, brought those capabilities to 2015, and so your maps, flat files, schemas um, were inherited from Bistock Server, and now you're able to upload those to this integration pack and use them within Logic Apps, including the functoid. Delivery. Including the functoid. So yeah. we have in the and we've, we've modified it so that uh, uh, we've componentized the, the functoids and so that we reference those functoids a little differently now than, than what was generated before. Um, and then you'll be able to have your own functoids and uh, exp uh, script that you can reference as well. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's an interesting problem that um, you know, we want to solve, that uh, being able to have map portability between on-prem and the cloud is an important thing. A lot of people invest a lot of time with the maps that they've created. They may even create their own custom functoids as well as the ones that we provide. So we're working towards a model where we make that possible. Um, you know, it's interesting in a kind of uh, a cloud-hosted model where you know, it's, it's iPads, that, you know, how we do that. So um, that's, that's work we've actually got in flight at the moment to land that so that uh, we make that a possibility. So yes, we will run your maps on our platform. You don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Do you have to sort of like you have to upload the XSL um, to the VPN? Well, the way that works. Um, yeah. So uh, you still have to upload the BTM. Um, it was a question. So you know, based on your BDM files inside the BDM, you have the XSLT. So the way that works um, is with the toolings provided, um, with the map of the Visual Studio integration to be able to create these things. Um, when you do the build, now we've augmented that. You do the build, and the build spits out the XSLT to make it easy to then upload the XSLT rather than having to take the BDM file, which is really you know, a class with a set of properties that just returns the XLT, so we've optimized that to make that easy to, uh, to get those maps uploaded. So if I upload the XLT, I don't need to upload the schema then? That's right. I mean, you never, you yeah. never did, right? So there's, there's not a dependency on the schema at runtime. Yeah. Exactly. That's right. It's design time. For yes, for validation, for validation, you want the schema, and yes. we'll show that actually later yes, in, yes. in the pipeline. Uh, so then, of course, you have partners for, for B2B EDI scenarios. You have partners and agreements. And those, that partner information, you can, you can see we have uh, portal experience for being able to uh, create a partner. So we look at one of the, the partners, we see that you have the qualifiers. So you can go ahead and uh, identify and uh, do resolution on those partners. So this is, uh, you can see we have the long list of different qualifiers that you can pick from and the values you can set on those qualifiers to identify and, and find those partners. And finally, and besides the agreements, which I won't show you, that's, that's coming up really soon. Uh, but we have certificates. So for AS2, you need a certificate to go ahead and sign and encrypt your messages. And so we want to be able to uh, manage those certificates for you as well. So if you uh, go ahead and add a certificate, there's two parts to it. One, for the public certificate, we will go ahead and store the, the public cert uh, in our store. But if you have a private certificate, click on private here you'll see that the um, key vault lights up. So what we do is we take the, the uh, private part of the certificate and push it into a key vault, so then key vault is now managing securely your private keys. So that is the integration pack. So one of the uh, uh, great things about the integration pack is that you know, we're, we're packages, packaging this together and it'll be easily referenced from your logic app. So now you don't have to have loose schemas someplace. And if you're using the, the V1 um, pieces of, of our EDI components, you had to individually stick within the, con the, the uh, connector, the schemas and the maps, and they weren't reproducible. And you had to, it was That's very right. painful yeah. before. I, I mean, I'll add to that that uh, you know, I think some of the experience and some of the feedback we got from V1 was that the way, again, we talked about this this morning, the way we changed the connector architecture to make this much easier to consume. 
um, means that uh, the kind of the burden that, uh, of uh, you having provisioned these API apps, these connectors, has gone away. And, but with some of the EDI components that we had, the burden actually included some other stuff as well. It actually included the artifacts that you uploaded to that thing. That made it very hard to manage, very hard to move these things around. Um, especially when you're thinking about, you know, the dev test exceptions kind of production um, deployments, it's like these things become locked inside the instances of those connectors and you've kind of uploaded sort of persistent state inside them. So that's really, the integration account was born out of that feedback and make a much easier management experience and the ability to kind of upload and download and, and manage these artifacts. So now you can have multiple, multiple of your logic apps referencing the same integration account and uh, you get a much more better, uh, you get a better container, containerization of those artifacts as well. Maybe. Can you manage the 997 and MDM as well? He's so going to go through the uh, demo and you'll get to see some of that. So I showed that, uh, the, yeah. that in the keynote this morning, yeah. So, yes. So, uh, for, for those, of course, that are familiar with handling uh, XML in uh, BizTalk, everybody's familiar with the Vetter pipeline. So in, in your send and receive ports, you have pipeline set up, which does your validate, um, extract, transform, uh, enhance, and route. So uh, we've enabled those capabilities within Logic Apps. So we can do now XML enterprise type of messaging in Logic Apps. So for the validate, we have the XML validation um, action so that you can go ahead and reference one of those schemas that's uh, in the uh, integration account and we will go ahead and validate that uh, XML against the schema. Uh, what's coming next is that you can, you know, if you didn't want to, to reference the uh, schema in the integration account, you can have uh, more dynamic messaging where the schema, you, you retrieve the schema from someplace else or from another source. So you can do inline schemas as well. And then finally, we'll do schema resolution so we'll discover the right schema to use instead of uh, being explicit about which name schema to reference in that uh, validation step for XML. You mean XML validation, I presume that you also have black page parser? Yes. Yes. So the question was, do we also have a flat file parser? Yes, we do have a flat file parser. Uh, extract, so one of the things that, that's in the language today is that we've uh, created an XPath uh, function so that uh, now you can go ahead and um, XPath into your XML as part of the, uh, the code of your, your logic app. So you can select literal single nodes or node sets out of that uh, XPath. And uh, you know, with, the, with the designer being updated so that you can do functions within the designer, so then that'll be a much easier experience to go ahead and reference that XPath within the designer experience as well. Transform, this is the, the big one. So we have the uh, mapper in, in BizTalk. You can use that same mapper from BizTalk server and have an XSLT, and that XSLT will be able to transform your XML. Um, so it has the compatibility that we had on-prem in the server. And we also have added uh, parameter support. So now you can pass in parameters to that, uh, to that mapper so that you can do enrichment within the transform, and now you have a different way to get context, right? Before you had promoted properties that you had to reference in your context. Now you can actually pass parameters from anything that's running in your logic app into your transform and then utilize that in your transformation. Enrich, uh, Compose is an up and coming uh, capability. You have a question? I have a question. Uh, what happened to the, the mapper in uh, Mavs? What happened to the mapper in Mavs? Yeah, um, yeah so the, 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 the mapper in Mavs, one of the things that, that uh, we had to think hard about was you know, where is the mass of mappers that people are building today and have built in for the last uh, decade? Uh, and that was with, with uh, BizTalk Server. So we wanted to make sure that it was really easy to, to utilize all that work you guys did in BizTalk Server and be able to push that to the cloud. And so when we looked at the number of, of um, maps that were in, in MABs versus the maps that we find in BizTalk Server, it made more sense to make sure we focus on that and make sure that's easy for everybody to go ahead and reutilize the investments they already made in that mapper. Uh, it's, well, it's not deprecated. Mavs is still, is still a, a GA service that's running, and we're just focusing on, on uh, XSLTs in this, in this product. And the other thing, <laughs> if that uh, presents any challenges, if you're a digital services customer who has those TRFM maps and wants to start uh, using them from Logic Apps, you still have the opportunity, the possibility of 
Uh, we had a V1 uh, action which would have let you uh, spin okay. those up and run those as part of that as well. And we're figuring okay. out what the kind of long term, you know, how we do that long term for logic apps as well. So in a more integrated experience. So today you can you can enrich your messages, you know, in, in the language of uh, logic apps where you can insert certain items, but you know, one of the things that uh, you can't do to today is just construct or compose a new message um, out of thin air. But we will be exposing a new um, function that will enable you to do that, so you can have multiple inputs from different aspects of your actions and, and of outputs of those actions, and then compose a new, uh, new message, essentially. Question? Is there something uh, in the adapter some similar to the pipeline components that you can uh, add to the adapters, like a custom pipeline component for GitStock? So in, in the question was, can you add custom components to the pipeline? So in, in BizTalk, if you're familiar with BizTalk, you have, for example, your receive pipeline, and you have your standard components that you can put in that receive pipeline, for example, Vetter. But uh, you want to be able to have a custom component in that pipeline so as messages come in, your code can get run. So remember, this is in logic apps, and, and we'll show the, uh, uh, in the demo the logic app here. So your logic app is now representing your pipeline, but it's now not constrained to only certain steps that you can do uh, for that. So now you can have custom code that's running either in a function or an API app and just reference it in the middle of what you would consider your better pipeline. Um, but now we've opened the doors for you because essentially now you have a workflow instead of a constrained pipeline. More importantly, you don't have to worry about C++ code. You don't have to write C++ code? Yeah. Well, some people like to write C++ code. You can, <laughs> you can write in any language you want. You, know, you can host it and we'll call it and make sure it runs. But if you like C++, if you have existing pipeline components, you can take that pipeline component, put it into an, an API app or a function, and then we'll just call it and still continue to run. So you can, you can reuse the investments that you've had and not have to do that much work to go ahead and, and re-enable those scenarios in logic apps. And then finally, route. I mean, route is our kind of a bread and butter. You call any service, you can base it on condition to determine what endpoint you want to go to, or you can send it to a topic um, or a number of topics, and then the right routing happens based on that. Uh, call. So that's a better pipeline. Demo. All right. So we have here's our better pipeline. So we have um, a created a logic app that, that demonstrates what a, a better pipeline is. So we have a, as a reset re message is received, we have a request a trigger that will then go through an XML validation. That XML validation is referencing uh, a named schema called new order. So that's a, a schema that's in our integration account. It's gonna take the body of the request and go ahead and, and validate it. After that request is validated, it will send it to a map. That map will do a mapping of the order to a customer. Then the output of that map will then go to a condition. And you can see inside the condition that will do uh, an X path to go ahead and find the, uh, the zip code of the order that's come in. And then based on the, on the zip code, we'll determine which topic we actually send it to in service bus. Uh, so that's our, our better. And then we'll actually do a response back so then you can see that, that it actually works. So well, there would it be possible to have a load selector in that the condition is for typing in that X path? That'd be nice. That's a great feature request. Yeah. Thank you. So the question was, the, can you have a node selector instead of having to write the, the X path and stuff? Yes. Uh, we, don't, we don't do that today, but that's a, a, a great enhancement that we can do to, to make that a great experience in the designer. Just one point on the uh, XML validation, that, that this is the kind of the happy path through that you see, which is keeping it um, sort of straightforward for uh, demonstration purposes. But the semantics is similar for any other of the actions or connectors in logic apps that the, uh, if the um, step failed, then the, the uh, following steps will be aborted because it's, it's got a failure. So we're not responding to whether it um, uh, succeeded or not because it's implicit in the behavior that the next step will execute when the validation step right. succeeds, right? But you could have a condition underneath that that checks the result and then we provide an enumerated list of the errors, validation errors in that validation step. You can then uh, decide what to do with those before continuing processing. Let's go ahead and kick that off. It's going to go ahead and send that message to my pipeline uh, logic app. 
go ahead and process it, and hopefully get the right one working. And yes, then it responds with the actual message that, that, uh, that the order got transformed into. Yay. Okay, I want to hand this off to John. <coughs> okay. So uh, I showed uh, some of the EDI capabilities this morning in the keynote. Um, so the, uh, the features we have um, coming really soon, and, and we want to uh, get this to you guys in the private preview form as soon as we possibly can, are the X12 and AS2 features that, uh, that I demonstrated this morning. And that showed you know, how you could um, post in a, an AS2 encoded message that, that contained an X12 850 purchase order and then kind of uh, break all that down and then do some processing on it. And uh, that actually has behind it all of the flags and everything necessary to send back these sync or async acknowledgements and, uh, and all the rest of it to conform to all the specifications. And we're actually just kicking off the work to do the drum and certification around these pieces as well so that uh, by the time we get this to general availability, we have all the certification in place that you would expect from us. Um, so coming soon, you know, after this uh, is Edifax support. Um, uh, I think uh, you know we, it's hard to provide dates, so uh, we'll be working on that next. As soon as we get X12 and uh, and AS2 in folks' hands, we're, we're, uh, we'll be moving to Edifact. Um, and then you know I just wanted to add to some of the things that Jeff was talking about this morning around tracking, because that's super important for uh, for EDI, having visibility into these workloads and understanding when failures occur. Um, and uh, you know, getting insights into that data so you can figure things out, um, get alerting on the on uh, failures and deal with them and resolve them. Um, so we're piling onto exactly the same uh, mechanism that uh, that Jeff talked about this morning, the track properties. So these uh, actions we're providing actually emit a lot of state around um, the, all the EDI processing and uh, and everything necessary that we need to track. Um, and then that just gets pushed into storage and then um, the plan is we build um, you know, the, the uh, mechanisms around that to consume that and provide a portal for that to surface that up. And uh, the more we can make that configurable for our customers and provide the experience that they want to see, you know, everyone has different requirements in terms of what they want to see, the alerting uh, they want to set, we think we can provide a great you know, management experience over the top of that. Uh, as the Kevin mentioned, sorry? So there are lots of these existing customers who have built it on desktop server. Uh, EDA functionalities, I mean. Right. right. Because you can reuse those agreements, the schemas and maps. So do you have a way of taking that into this new scenario? So schemas and maps, I think we, we talked about that already. So yes, um, training yeah. partners and agreements. Uh, so you can support schemas, you can support maps, you can support agreements. Yeah. I'm asking, like, is there a way to get lift and shift from server to Azure? So those, yes, that's, that's the plan. Uh, with training partners and agreements, we've designed this in a way that's, uh, that has that backward compatibility. Um, so uh, we're not exactly sure what the mechanism will look like to be able to move the artifacts from BizLock server to um, Logic Apps, but that's definitely uh, in scope for, for later to be able to do that. Yeah, we understand that some customers, as Kevin said, have hundreds or thousands of training partners, they don't really want to enter all this data again, you want to be able to kind of have some export and import mechanism or something like that to be able to uh, you know, move those workloads to, to logic apps and, and uh, run them there if that's what they want to do. Um, and as Kevin mentioned, you know, the schema and, and party resolution uh, is work that's also uh, coming soon. We're actually working on that right now. So, and also referencing, so schemas being able to reference one another and making sure we get all of that right. Obviously, you know, when you get into complex schemas and all the EDI ones have references, base types, all that kind of thing, and being able to provide uh, support for that to all work seamlessly as well. Okay. So I was going to go back into uh, what I showed this morning. Uh, let's have a look and pull up this 850 and just explain in a bit more detail what's going on here. So here's the logic app. That, uh, that I showed this morning, I actually ran this through, and you saw the uh, the MDN come back, you know, the response. I'm going to ask a question. How many people do EDI processing today? Good number, about half. Okay, so that's great. Cool. <coughs> awesome. On BizTalk? On BizTalk. <laughs> yeah. Well, not as many. That's interesting. Great. Yeah. <laughs> I so. <assume> that. <laughs> well, <coughs> yeah. I, so I'm going to talk about, about this in context of futures again, because this is. Um, 
uh, you know, this is the title of roadmap session, so you know, we have a lot of these things really close and really ready to go in, into folks' hands in, in preview to give you guys access to this to try it out and give us feedback. Um, so some of the other things we're doing around this is that uh, the way, um, uh, as Kevin mentioned, the way parties are resolved is through um, the qualifiers and values that you set up on the trading partners and the trading partners agreements and resolving the data coming in to that trading partner and then obviously you have the certificates and everything else associated with that and you can associate all of these things to the logic app. So that's how we do it currently. But, but this whole mechanism is, is very extensible um, and we're going to be uh, working to expose that as well. So including the integration account itself has extensible metadata capabilities on it. Um, so uh, it's often the case that people used various ways in the past of being able to store configuration through uh, you know, any kind of workflow engine and, and that's an important um, uh, thing that we've seen doing kind of simple lookups of values and the integration count is ideal for those types of things as well and where you have you know, additional metadata on partners that you want to capture, you can add that and, and uh, we'll, we'll make that uh, you know, provision as well for you. And then uh, you know, on top of that, you know, that, that data you probably want to be able to uh, find on that data or search on that data that you've tagged these, these things with or extended them with and also use that for party resolution as well. So that's in the roadmap that we're working on, on making uh, kind of uh, taking the implicit behavior you see there, here and making it more explicit so you can influence the, uh, the party resolution for your own extensible metadata or uh, you know, whatever else you want to use conditions to be able to resolve that information uh, at runtime as well. Okay. Enterprise connectivity. Right. So, um, I think one, one of the things that may be obvious to some folks is um, right now we have a great uh, SaaS story and connectivity story with all the connectors that we have in Logic Apps to the cloud. Um, but where we obviously want to go to is being able to connect to those sources on-premise as well. We had this capability in B1 and we're, we're kind of re-enabling this um, with the, uh, you know, the new uh, designer and the new features. Uh, I just want to talk through some of the connectors that we're going to be lighting up. Uh, and these include, you know, the first ones we really want to push on are SQL, Oracle and DB2. So that's SQL Server, Oracle um, Database and DB2. Uh, we have a bunch more planned as well. In fact, we have a long list than this, but these are ones that you know, we're, we're fairly sure we can, we can get these in a reasonable time frame. Um, and uh, Paul, who's sitting in the audience over there, is one of the folks who's going to make this happen. So there's MQ series, you know, IBM Web Server MQ. Um, what is one of our super popular um, adapters that we had in BizHawk and also connects her in, in V1 or Logic Apps. Um, other ones like Infomix, um, SAP, Oracle Business Suite, file to be able to connect to file systems on-prem and CICS to be able to um, integrate with uh, IBM mainframes as well. Um, so we want to get uh, you know, rich enterprise connectivity story and we're uh, again working hard to be able to give more concrete plans about when we make these features available. We know that SAP is you know, top of the list for a lot of customers, especially when they're doing EDI. Um, so we want to make that, um, want to make that a great experience. Um, so what I wanted to show now was a quick uh, demonstration of what that actually looks like. Rather than just talking about it, that we're, when we're going to have these capabilities, I'm actually going to jump into Logic Apps and show you a Logic App that I built um, that actually goes to on-prem SQL Server and can actually do CRUD operations to my on-prem SQL. So if I pull up this Cloud to SQL Logic App, uh, this is super simple. I'm just going to show you, show you how it works and show you it running. And then we're going to flip to my machine back in Redmond. And you can see uh, Management Studio open there. And, uh, and we can see what happens. So if I open this up, you can see I've just got a manual trigger when the designer renders. And then I've got a, the uh, SQL connectivity. So you know, just, just actually when an HTTP request is received, uh, I want to insert a row. Um, here I can enumerate the database that I got on-prem. I've got two databases there, uh, sorry, two tables in my database so I can pick customers. And then I can just fill in the values. Obviously the values because it's a logic act can come from any preceding step or I can uh, actually put in uh, literal values here as well or an expression or anything else that I, that I want to do to uh, push data into SQL. Um, so if I just put a customer ID of 200, uh, customer name, uh, let's put BizTalk 360. Uh, London, I'm just going to overtype this, and where are we, Excel, 
This is great. So from the cloud, we've been able to dynamically interrogate the database that you made a connection to and discover all the, the tables that you have and give you a first class experience for filling out those values in the, the logic knows app. what the postcode is, shout it out. It's probably EC, EC2. Right, so if I just kind of save that down, so successfully, then I can come here. I'm just going to kick it off manually. So uh, let's just quickly flip over to my machine here, which is almost certainly locked. Make sure I'm not about to type my password somewhere I shouldn't. So this is my real machine. You know, this is um, a real machine on prem, and I've got Management Studio running on this thing, and it's absolutely tiny here, but you can see uh, that I have no rows in that database. Oh, that 6.30 in the morning there. Great. Tell you, it feels like 6.30 in the morning. So let's see if I can magnify this a little bit. Uh, did it again. Uh, it's a lag. It's got uh, 5,000 miles. What's that? I, I was commenting at all the games on your work start. Oh, yeah, I know. So it's basically yeah, he's got nothing to do. All, right? <laughs> so, there's, so there's nothing there. So if I flip back, uh, it's a sec. If I flip back and then I run this logic app. Started successfully, you can see it's already there. And let's flip back and see what happens. Don't delete the customer. And you can see there's the data <laughs> appeared. What's that? Don't delete the customer. Don't delete the customer, no. <laughs> so this is the same orders database that I had earlier. Yeah, same database that I used in the Bizzle demo this morning. You had a question over there, John. Sure. Over where? Over where? Over where? <laughs> yep. I was just wondering, could you highlight what's different about that than the existing SQL connector that we had? The V1 SQL connector? Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that in, in detail right now. There's more details we'll be able to provide really soon around this as well, um, exactly how that works and the, and the capabilities that it's got. I just wanted to really show that the capability is real and we've got it working today. Uh, and uh, those capabilities. So, so we have all the CRUD operations on there. Uh, we also have Oracle as well, actually, and uh, you know, the list that I mentioned. So being able to create, read, update, delete operations on it. Um, yeah. Is, the, is that answer the question? Or? Um, are there uh, are stored procedures as well? Stored procedures as well. I knew that you got about to ask me that question. I think the answer is yes, but I can certainly check on that. If it's not, if it's not there, it will be there soon afterwards. It's, it's definitely one of the high uh, requirements we've got on the list. Um, so yeah, I would, I would assume that in the fullness of time that, that we have store product support, because obviously that's a, that's, that's a necessity. SQL XML. So why, why, why would you want SQL XML support? Because I'm really wanted to pass in that entire payload as JSON. So the incoming is XML, I can just pass in XML. But you're, you're making assumptions about how the, how the payload is passed around by doing that, right? No, my incoming load is XML. As long as I can pass it there, I'm fine. Right, yeah. Yeah. Today it's I see. Right. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is not really uh, that uh, there's there's similarities and differences to the way we do this today. This is a kind of an, an enhancement of what we do today. So uh, it's, I probably okay. can't put it much simpler. Can I pass an XML payload as it is and expect it to work from SQL to SQL to SQL? I can't think of a reason why not, but I can certainly go back and find out I more tried about it. that. It's to yeah. and it's the reason that I've but you haven't it. tried it with this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is not the V1 connector. This is this is not the V1 connector. Yeah, yeah. So this the V1 connector it works. Right. Okay. So the V2 Good. connector it fails. Yeah. And ah. the reason given was that SQL XML is not supported. So the V2 SQL connector is that SQL Azure though? Or? Yeah. 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 This is a different different thing. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll find make out. Sure it we'll works. find out. We'll make sure it works. Good question. Yeah. We'll make sure it works. Was there another question? Yep. Yes. More, more details will be okay. provided in the, uh, fairly, fairly shortly, yeah. yeah. I just wanted to give you a sneak peek of what's coming. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. Right, okay. You're, you're a tease. <laughs> yes, I know, it's terrible. I just wanted to show this again. You know, we've got a ton of stuff. You've seen you know, a lot of things that we're talking today. Nearly all of it's new or been really recently released. Um, and I just want to really show you, as, you know, how much progress we've made since we were here last year. And uh, you know, across the board, across BizTalk, across Logic Apps, across enterprise connectivity, the whole thing. We've been working like 
unbelievably hard, haven't we, Jim? It's been fantastic. <laughs> so uh, I think that's it, right? Is there anything that's, else? That's anything it. else we no. wanted to cover? I think we're, we're at time. Well on time. We're at time. So uh, again, you know, we throw up the slide. You know, we're here. We're listening. You know, we reach out to us. Um, you know, we always always want feedback, and you know, we really, really. Um, uh, want to get these bits in your hands as quickly as we can because we want to want to see what you think of them as well and uh, and try them out and uh, and give us great feedback. Thanks. 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 Thanks.